Ann Trudell and I'm a consultant at Princess Margaret Cancer Centre in Toronto, Canada. And today on behalf of my colleagues, I'll be presenting the abstract from ASCO reporting the results of DREAM8, a randomized phase three study of Valantamath Mathodotin plus pomalidomide and dexamethasone or PBD versus pomalidomide plus bortezomib and dexamethasone PVD in patients whose multiple myeloma has recurred. So um, belantamath mafidotin plus pomalidomide and dexamethasone, or PBD, met the primary endpoint of the DREAM8 study with a significant reduction in the risk of progression or death compared to PVD in patients who have had one prior line of therapy and including lenalidomide. In addition, BPD was associated with a trend to better survival more greater depth and durability of responses and a progression-free survival to benefit. The safety and tolerability of the combination was consistent with the known safety of the three individual agents. Um, and the ocular events were frequent, but generally they were reversible, manageable with dose modifications and led to a low treatment discontinuation rate. So the premise for the study was based on the fact that patients with newly diagnosed myeloma are being treated with uh, three drugs and sometimes even four drugs, including proteasome inhibitor, immunomodulatory drugs, and anti-CD38 antibodies. So at the time that the disease recurs, they have been exposed to the three major classes of anti-myeloma drugs. And many will be actually refractory, what we call resistant to these three classes of drugs. And so this really highlights the need for new treatments that incorporate drugs that work in the new by a new mecha mechanism of action. So Belantamath mafidotin or Belamath is a first in class antibody drug conjugate that targets BCMA. So it will uh, basically deliver a potent chemotherapeutic drug to cells that have BCMA on their surface, and that includes myeloma cells, allowing for killing of the tumor cells. The results of DREAM7 were also presented at ASCO this year, and they combined Belamath with bortezomib and dexamethasone, and that study showed a uh, an improvement in the progression-free survival and a trend to improved overall survival compared to daratumumab, bortezomib, and dexamethasone in patients whose disease has come back after one previous treatment. So together, these two studies support the, the use of belamath in combinations in early lines of, of treatment. So the DREAM-8 study enrolled patients who had received one previous treatment where the disease has recurred, and that treat, at, at least one of the treatments they've received must have included lenalidomide. They cannot have been uh, exposed or have received in the past palmolidomide or an anti-BCMA-targeted uh, treatment. And these patients were assigned one-to-one -to, -one to receive belantamath mafidotin plus pomalidomide and dexamethasone, or PBD, or to receive bortezomib pomalidomide dexamethasone, PVD. And these patients continued on treatment until the disease progressed, or they had toxicities, side effects that they needed to come off study, or they withdrew consent. And the primary goal of the study was to see whether or not the patients who were on the BPD arm had a longer progression-free survival, meaning that they had a lower risk of progression or death compared to the patients who received PVD. So 302 patients were um, allocated 155 to BPD and 150, 147 to PVD. And at the time that we analyzed this data, patients had been followed for approximately 22 months. And at that point, more patients were continuing to receive treatment in the Bellamath arm. So 50, 
<clears throat> so 36% of patients were still on treatment compared to 21% of patients on the PVD arm. And the most common reason for patients to discontinue treatment was for disease progression, 27, 28% in the Bella PD arm and 48% in the PVD arm. These show, this table shows the patient characteristic at baseline, and we can see that all the characteristics listed here, age, uh, performance status, um, and various staging assessments were equally balanced between the both arms, and that includes for patients who have uh, high-risk uh, features. In addition, the approximately half of the patients had received only one previous treatment. 100% of patients had received lenalidomide and 81% in the Bella PD arm were resistant to, to lenalidomide and 76% in the PVD arm were resistant to palmalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone or PVD. And in, in, in addition, approximately a quarter of patients in each arm had, were also resistant to anti-CD38 antibodies. So this is the uh, results of the progression-free survival. So what we see is that for patients in the Bella PD arm, the, the risk of progression or death was not reached at the 22-month follow-up and was only 12.7 months for patients who received PVD. So at one year, 71% of patients in the Bella PD arm were still ongoing, having not progressed, whereas 51% of patients in the PVD arm had progressed. And when we look at various patient characteristics, we see that Bella, patients who got Bella PD had a better progression-free survival, as indicated by dots that are on the left side of the dotted line. Even though those patients who have high-risk disease uh, benefited from the Bella PD arm, and those patients who were resistant to lenalidomide and those patients who were resistant to anti-CD38 antibodies had a better progression-free survival compared to the patients who had PVD. We saw that the overall response rate was similar in both arms, 77% in patients who received Bella PD and 72% for patients who received PVD. However, what we see is that the depth of response was better in the patients who received PVD, with 40% of patients achieving a complete response rate compared to only 16% in the PVD arm. Further, more patients in the Bella PD arm who achieved a complete response were found to be MRD negative, 24% in the Bella PD arm versus 5% in the PVD arm. So responses are deeper in the PVD arm. And this uh, resulted in patients re uh, having longer responses. So for those patients who achieved a response, the, the at the time of the analysis, the, the um, we had not reached the medium for the duration of response compared to uh, 17.5 months for patients in the PVD arm. In fact, at the time of the data cut, 50, over 50% 50 of patients in the Bella PD arm who had responding were continuing to respond. And then for, we also saw that there was a um, improvement or a, a progression-free survival too, which means that patients, once they uh, progressed on either arm and received a new treatment, more patients who had received Bella PD and were on a new treatment were continuing to benefit from the, their next treatment. So then progression-free survival was not reached compared to 22.4 months for the patients who received PVD. So there was also a, a, a trend to overall survival benefit for patients who received Bella PD. Um, and this benefit came despite patients who 
were on PVD receiving effective therapy at the time of their progression, including anti-CD38 antibodies and BCMA-targeted treatments. So this slide just presents an overview of the safety. And the key messages here are that um, the majority of patients had um, some side effects in both arms, that the patients on the P PBD arm were on treatment twice as long as patients who had PVD. So when we adjust for the time, the extra time that they were on treatment, we see that the moderate uh, sorry, moderate to severe adverse events, we call that grade three or four side effects, or serious adverse events were actually lower in the Bella PD arm. Um, and that patients in the Bella PD arm had some dose holds and also some dose reductions where we reduced the frequency of treatment from every four to every eight weeks in order to manage the eye toxicities. And with that, very few patients, only 9% of patients discontinued treatment due to um, side effects on their eyes. So this actually table shows you what the most common side effects were in the two arms. And they were primarily what we call thrombocytopenia or low platelet count, neutropenia, low neutrophil count, and we adjust, when we adjust for the time that patients were receiving treatment, these were similar between the two groups, the PBD and the PVD. There was a slight increased risk of infections with patients on the PBD arm. That would say sort of serious to severe infections were 35% for Bella PD and 28% for PBD. And we see that patients on the Bella PD, 89% of patients had symptoms, eye, sorry, had eye symptoms, including such things as blurred vision and dry eye. Where, and, but we also see that patients in the palmolitamide bortezomib dex arm also had, 30% um, also had some eye symptoms. And this shows you sort of what uh, patients would experience who have normal vision 20 on 20, who have sort of what we call blurred vision at 20 on 50, or who have impaired vision at 20 on 20, to, uh, 200. 34 patients in the Bella PD arm experienced vision of 20 on 20, 20 on 50 or worse, and two only two patients uh, ex uh, experience vision of 20 on 200 or worse. But the main take home message is that with these modifications that I mentioned to you of holding the dose or increasing the interval between the doses, 92% of patients uh, improved their vision and 84% of patients recovered back to their baseline vision at the time of the data cut. A majority of patients that were um, had not resolved at the time of the data cut are continuing now to improve and resolve. And this is just showing you essentially that this is a measure of quality of life. And quality of life did not worsen and remain stable throughout the treatment in both the two both arms, suggesting that. Um, side effects there's not um, didn't differences in side effects did not negatively impact quality of life. So in conclusion, Bella PD significantly reduced the risk of progression and death by nearly 50 percent over palm uh, palmolitamide bortezomib dexamethasone in patients who've received one prior therapy or more, including lenalidomide. And this benefit was seen across all the different patient uh, groups. Um, there was a trend to improvement in overall survival. The responses were deeper and more durable, and it was a progression-free survival to benefit. And the most commonly reported adverse events or, or side effects was affecting the eyes, and these were reversible, manageable with some dose modification and led to low treatment discontinuation. It did not appear to negatively impact quality of life. So these results, along with the DREAM7, suggest that Bellamef combination may represent a new standard of care for patients who've had one or more prior lines of therapy due to its robust efficacy 
manageable safety and ease of administration. This is a combination that, as we showed, it benefits a broad range of patients can be given in a community center without the need to go to a specialized center. Um, so this results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, and you can scan this QR code for a plain language uh, summary of the study. And these are the various uh, institutions and investigators who participated in the study from across the world. Um, and I would like to thank the patients, family, and caregivers who participated in this trial. 